we've been trying to figure out how to close this sermon out, how to close out this series uh, all week. And um, one thing we found out about this Abraham dude, this Abraham dude, is his whole life was filled with him killing himself so that he could learn how to follow God. And that's an everyday challenge. You know why? Because you and I work hard to get a little God's credit. Okay, 10 of y'all. Every day, you say the reason you got that job is because of your education. God says, I gave you a brain, and I gave you strength to go learn so you could get that job. Every day, you say where you live is because you saved well. God says, had it not been for me, your address could have been under somebody's bridge. You say the reason you're rolling in that nice car with the rims that keep spinning is because you saved it. God says the reason I even gave you a car is because all through life, God is trying to stop you from celebrating you and start celebrating him. That's my whole sermon. That you will never get God's true blessing if you're trying to be a blessing to you. That's why you can make more money and have less at the end of the month. That's why you can have a big house and still can't sleep. That's why you can have a car and still don't have anything driving you. It's because when you don't learn who gave it to you, he has trouble giving you new gifts when you ain't thanked him for the old gifts. So, so here it is, here it is, here it is. I'm not going to hold you long because the babies are in here. That there are two texts that I want you to study this week. Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11, and Genesis chapter 12. Why is that so important? Because Genesis cha chapter 11, the answer for Genesis chapter 11 is Genesis chapter 12. Because Genesis chapter 11 says this, verse number 1. It says, at one time, all the people, it's going to come up in a minute, at one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language. Isn't that a trip? Did y'all know we all used to speak English? No, I'm just joking, y'all. I'm just seeing how long y'all going to go with me. They spoke all the same language, and they used the same word. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia, and they settled there. Now, here's the key, verse number three. They began saying to each other, here's the problem. It's bad when you're talking to each other but never talk to God. When you're always talking on Facebook, but never put your face in his book. It's a danger of talking out and never talking up. It says, then they began saying to each other, let's make brick, harden them with fire. In this region, brick were used instead of stone, and tar was used instead of mark. Verse number four. Then they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves. With a tower that reaches into the sky. Look what they said to themselves. This will make us the bomb. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. All right, now let's look at Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. This is going to trip you out. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 1. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, your kinfolk, kinfolks, moo moo, boot boo, them. My dear, and all them, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. Look at verse number two. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. And I will be a blessing uh, to others, and you will be a blessing to others. Look at verse number three. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Y'all see that? Genesis chapter 11, they were trying to make themselves famous. Genesis chapter 12, God said, I'll make you. It's a big difference when you try to do it for yourself, and then it's a whole different story when you let God do it for you. This morning I want to preach on the subject, you can't win, dot, dot, dot. I'll fill in the dots here in a minute. You can't win by yourself. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to study your word. Help us to look inside ourselves. Help us to develop ourselves. Help us to work on ourselves. 
so we can be careful and mindful to give you all the glory. Thank you for being better to us than we would ever know how to be to ourselves. In your son's name we do pray. And all who believe said amen. Y'all sit with me. This week I was struggling with how to get this sermon together. And when I was preaching this sermon to the staff, Deacon Sherman said in our staff meeting, he said, that reminds me when Michael Jackson sung the song in the Wizard of Oz. The other Wizard of Oz. The Wiz, the BET Wiz, uh, uh, sung the song, You Can't Win. The whole core, the whole essence of the song simply is, is suggesting when he was up on that scarecrow stick, he was trying to get down with his own power. And he realized after uh, Diana Ross came through and Toto came through, that all of the effort he's tried to do to do it on his own, he realized he couldn't do this life by himself. He was trying to use his own effort, his own strength, his own mobility to get off of that stick instead of letting somebody else help him. Okay. Ah. Uh, that most of us struggle in life. Most of my struggle has been when I've worked hard to get the glory out of his blessing. It's the syndrome of Adam and Eve. That Adam and Eve could have stayed in that beautiful garden with everything of perfection had they not want to be little God. That most of us have taken intellect, finances, job promotion, ability to sell and purchase, the freedom that we have, we have taken that and misused that to celebrate our gift instead of celebrating the one who is the giver of gifts. See that it's a big difference in being in Genesis chapter 11 than it is being in Genesis chapter 12. These guys in Genesis chapter 11 wanted to make a tower that would go up to heaven. Now, I want to give you something that might trip you out. This might blow your mind. God did not have any problem with them trying to build a tower to heaven. Read Genesis chapter 11 uh, in between the Pro Bowl tonight. Uh, the Bible says God came down from heaven, looked at the tower, and said this. This is what God said. They all have one language. They all have one motivation. They all have one move, and nothing will be able to stop them. Nowhere does God say he was mad about them building a tower to heaven. God said the problem is they're trying to do it with their own power. And they're trying to get the blessings from it without blessing me for it. And he said he came down and disturbed them, frustrated them, because God does not want you to try to live this life without giving him the glory. Now, now let, me, let me say something to you, and I'm going to let you go. That when we were younger, when we were in Bible class, when we were in church, we were taught a doctrine of don't. Don't smile, don't laugh, don't stand up, don't go to this church, don't sit down, don't move too much, don't be too happy, don't be too sad, don't raise your hand, don't sit on your hand. And all we knew were the don'ts of God. Here's the problem with it. I'm going to give you a secret that I'm only telling you. God wants you to be happy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. God, I want y'all to listen today. I'm trying to close out this series. God wants you to have money. I'm not talking about that prosperity thing. If you send $10 in and get a prayer wag, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about God wants you to have a good job. God doesn't want you to be miserable. God don't want you to be in jacked up relationships. He don't want you to uh, uh, be rolling with three tires. God wants you to do well. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to get a promotion at your job when you start getting to work on time. 
and stop taking an hour and 15 minute lunches. Talking about where he don't come back on time. That ain't your day. He wants you to do well. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Most of us do well and forget about who helped them. It's like leaving, growing up in a small house and leaving that house and you buying your mansion and forget about whence you come. And now you too have polluted to go back to that one room shack that God taught you how to be who you are. Here's the problem with us. Most times, God wants to give you more, but the question you have to ask yourself, when is the last time you thanked him for what he did give you? The Bible says, Genesis chapter 11, these guys trying to build this tower to heaven, God came down and frustrated them. And everything they wanted, God gave to Abraham. Because it's a big difference. This is not one of my points, but this is a big difference in you making you and God making you. It's a big difference in allowing God to bless you and you trying to learn how to bless yourself. Because when you bless yourself, you only have the ability to hold on to that blessing as long as your capabilities hold it. When he blesses you, even devils in hell, even imps who are fighting against you, even principalities, powers, might, and dominions can't get your blessing. Because when God gives it to you, that's why you have to thank God when you have peace at the house and not act like you did it yourself because it don't take long before a devil comes in. That's why you have to thank God on Monday morning instead of fussing about the job, won't you celebrate God for the job and God can help you with something better. If you change your mindset, it's actually looking at, God, I'm not worth you blessing, but for some reason, your grace and mercy keeps blessing me all of the days of my life. I'm not worth for you to, to help me with my sin life. I'm not worth for you to put a roof over my head. I'm not worth having something to eat last night. I'm not worth being able to have a change of blue change, but for some reason, God, you have blessed me more than I owe myself. And you every now and then have to come to church and stop acting like God ought to celebrate you for being here and recognize that when I look over my life and I think things over, had it not been for. So here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is as I find my glasses. First of all, you've got to remember that you can't win trying to get the glory. I'm not going to even sit down. You can't win trying to get the glory. Here's the problem with the glory. When you get the glory, you snatch your ability to get the glory later. Okay, I got Bible for that because Matthew says, here's the problem. If you want to get glory down here, God says, go ahead and get it. I'm going to erase your glory over there. If you want people to celebrate you for who you are what you've done and where you've been. And I had to learn that the hard way. I had to learn that the hard way. When, when uh, we were, uh, when Melanie and I were working with another church, um, uh, we built uh, this new building and a million dollar, million point three uh, dollar building. And, uh, and uh, uh, the church had grown from 72 people to that Sunday I got fired, 510 people and God had blessed us. And I remember about three months prior to that, I was sitting in this big old office with new furniture. I mean, the office was laid, Brother Jackson. Even had an ottoman for me to sit on when I got tired and put my feet up. It was, it was not, and I remember one Sunday saying, man, you done finally done something. Come on, I'm letting you in on the inside of my jacked up life. Because I know y'all got some jacked upness too. Yeah, you just ain't saying it. If I pass the mic, everybody... And I was sitting in that office walking around. You know that stroll? You know that Obama stroll that coming from one and thinking I had done it? And three months later, I was putting my books in a box. That ain't funny. Y'all need to learn when to giggle. What happened? God said, I got to take you out of this because... You thought you did it. But he says, if I take you out of it, learn from it. 
So if I ever give it back to you, you'll act like, who am I that God would find favor on such a wretched fellow like me? And the same thing is true with you. Sometimes God takes you out of a class to teach you a lesson. The problem is when he has to require you to keep re-enrolling to the class that you should have learned from. Because how can you take glory for anything? I mean, I'm going to give you time to think this thing through. What can you celebrate yourself for doing? If you think you are the bomb, you think you really got it going on, let God shut off your oxygen. You know, it don't take you all day to get sick. You can be sitting in your house eating dinner and that deaf angel swoops down and chooses you. You don't know how many times God has healed your body and you didn't even know you were sick. You don't know how many times that flu could have turned into pneumonia, pneumonia, double pneumonia, and the next thing you know that you walked in but rolled out. You don't know how many times God, so how can you celebrate yourself? And we are people who want to celebrate ourselves. And poor people are the worst. I'm not talking about poor. I'm talking about broke. You know how you know it? Because they put everything they own in the front yard. Why? Because you got to show everybody. Broke people are the only ones buying luxury cars. Because the reason I got to buy it is to show you I can afford Broke folks have to put it in front to act like you got something that you don't have, and it creates misery back here because the first person you forget is the one who blessed you with. I, I'm dealing with it uh, with my son. He's living a whole different life. I have told him we are on a budget. So we ain't doing that. We trying to save money. Daddy want to retire. So he goes around telling everybody, we can't eat here. We ain't been to El Phoenix in years. We go to Taco Casa. Come on, somebody. Same meat. Same sauce, cheese, and what normally costs $40 for three people. We were sitting up there, and I said, everybody get a taco. Mama, now you can get sour cream on your taco because you work. Blake talking about, I don't want this. I tell you, man shall not live by bread alone. You can sit here and watch us eat because we create self-righteousness. And some of us can't see God because we're arrogant. We got self-pride. We're boastful about nothing. We're braggadocious. And we have a social media world that makes you popular. It gives you a voice without experience. It gives you a voice without sacrifice. It gives you an opinion without facts. So now everybody is a professor. Everybody's a professional. Everybody has the remedy, the answer. And what it does is it creates an element in us that we become self-sufficient instead of reliant on so God tells Abram, I'm going to make you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you famous. And when God blesses you, and when God makes you, people who don't even like you can't deny that God has been on you. And God is working through you because you don't act like the you they remember. Because they remember the you that was void God. Now they see you as a different person because you are filled with God. Because here, here's what the text suggests to us. Not only you can't win trying to get the glory, but here's the last point. I'll let you go. You can't win trying to be great without God. 
Abraham, what are you teaching us in trying to be great? Now, here we are 4,000 years later still talking about somebody who God made great. But Abraham had to learn how to be great not on his own. He had to learn how to be great with God. Let me explain how. Every time Abraham had a decision at the first part of his life, Abraham never checked with God to see if the decision was right. This whole month we've been studying. Y'all remember when the food shortage happened and they had closed down all of the restaurants in Canaan and the Bible says Abraham had to go down to find food and he left Canaan and went to Egypt. Y'all remember that? Have y'all been here the last three weeks? Were you awake while you were here? Y'all remember two weeks ago we talked about Abraham had to leave Canaan, go down to Egypt because he was hungry. Thank you, Mama Miles. Uh, um, only Mama Miles and I were here. Uh, so he went down to Egypt. But the Bible says nowhere in that process did Abraham ask God, where you want me to go? Because, you know, our God is so great that God can feed you in a famine land. He might have not had to move at all had he just said, God, how am I going to eat? You got me out here. Won't you lead me now? God can drop down manna from heaven and have it for you fresh every morning. God can let quail come down. God can make a bitter water, sweet water. If you ever just asked him, and here is Abraham down there in Egypt, and he's trying to find his own food. You remember when he walked into Egypt, Pharaoh said, man, your wife is fine. Abraham said, that ain't my wife. That's my sister. And because he lied, and because he didn't check with God, the Bible says, and a plague came over Egypt. Pharaoh woke up early one morning and said, I don't know what type of game y'all rolling. And I don't know what's the goings on here. But y'all got to get up, out. Everybody's had that conversation. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get up, out. Y'all ain't never had that with your family to come over and stay too long. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get up out of here. And that's what Pharaoh said to them. They left, but guess what? He picked up a young girl by the name of Hagar. And when they didn't have their baby in the time they thought, Sarah said, Abraham, go lay with Hagar. Nowhere in the Bible do you see Abraham saying, Lord, should I? You don't see him dropping down to his knees saying, direct my steps, God. You know what Abraham said? Cool. Y'all not going to pray with me for a while. He went and lay with Hagar. And the first time we see Abraham check with God is when Hagar has a baby by the name of Ishmael. Isaac, uh, uh, Sarah has a son by the name of Isaac, who is the promised child. And you got one man, two mamas, two babies, and one house. And Abraham wakes up early in the morning and says, Lord, how you want me to handle this? And I wonder if God doesn't speak to us like that, saying sometimes, if you check with me first, you don't have to be in crazy relationships. If you check with me first, because see, you wouldn't pray about getting a new car. Because you were scared if you prayed about it, I might would say no. So what you do is go ahead and get it and then pray to me to help, ask me to help you pay the notes. That's what we do, that we don't ask, is this handsome, muscular man the one you have sent to me? Is this fine woman the one that God has uh, created for me? No, we go ahead and say, I do. Or we just lay. And after nine months, we say, oh, Lord. Y'all not going to help me here. Come on, you don't have to say it. Just admit it in your own life. Because a lot of us got the after prayer down. We just don't have a pre-prayer down. 
And you know what? You would stay a lot out of Mary J's drama. No more drama if you ever learn how to check with him first. Because he said, if you check with me first, you wouldn't have ended up in Egypt. If you check with me first, it wouldn't have been a Hagar in the house. If you check with me first, all of the mess you've gone through, you might have wouldn't have gone through had you let me leave instead of me having the force to follow you instead of you letting me. Oh, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. That. When you try to be great without God, God will let you, but you can't keep it. When you try to be the bomb without God, God will let you. But he, you can't keep it. You don't have the power. You're not good enough. I want to celebrate you for your MBA. I want to celebrate you for your doctorate. I want to celebrate you for your BA. I want to celebrate you for your GED. I want to celebrate you you got out the ghetto. I want to celebrate you that you've moved on. I want to celebrate you that you've done well, that you're married and got two or three kids and you're living out the American dream. Whatever that is, we're finding out that that might be a nightmare. I want to celebrate you for everything that the world views as great. But then God said, I want to give you all that too. I just want you to know who gave it to me. I don't want you to look up every, every Christmas thinking that a man came down the chimney, broke in your house, and leave gifts. That's not the neighborhood I grew up in. They would break in the house, but they wouldn't leave gifts. They would take. And that's how we treat God. Some of our relationship with God has never grown past elementary. You still view a God who doesn't want the best for you. You still view a God who's trying to make your life miserable. God says, I want you to have peace. I want you to be great. I want you to be famous. I want you to be popular. I want you to have a great family life. I want you to live a long life. I want you to be healthy. I want you to have joy. I want you to have everything you want in life. He just simply said, I just don't want you to do it without celebrating me for giving it to you. And let me tell you, that celebration is more than an hour and 15 minutes on Sunday. You know what that celebration is? It's on Monday when you're stuck in traffic. Instead of being mad about being stuck in traffic, say, God, I can't believe that I got a car to be stuck in traffic in. Instead of getting to the office early and running the boss down, just say, God, I can't believe I got a job. Instead of looking at your family, and the easy part is, is looking at everything you don't like. Instead of looking at your wife and saying, I can't believe she would stay with a fool like me. And instead of just saying, anybody can have kids, it's a whole different story to be able to raise them. It's all about your perspective. You can look at everything that's wrong. That's what easy, the easy job is. Or you can look at what God has given you. Because isn't it amazing you can always look out at what's wrong instead of inwardly? God is trying to say simply through this whole month that I want you to trust me. I want you to love me. But most of all, I want you to depend on me. Don't get so big that you forget about who made you. Don't get so great that you can wake up in the morning and not say thank you, God, for one more day. Huh? Don't have a meal brought in front of you. I don't care what it is. It can be steak or bologna. It can be a, 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 a filet mignon or it can be a cheese sandwich. Whatever it is. And just say, God, thank you for this daily bread. Don't want the mansion and forget about the studio apartment. Don't want the Bentley and don't forget about when you used to ride on the bus. Don't try to be big when little got you. 
And just know wherever God has you is because God put you there. And God wants to elevate you when you learn how to celebrate him for this day. Did y'all catch that? Somewhere along the way, you have to learn how to thank God for the little things. You don't feel good, but you feel it. You're not rich, but obviously we're not hungry. You don't have red bottoms on, but you got shoes. Learn how to celebrate God. Learn how to celebrate God in every day and say, God, I am because you are. When you get that in your mind, it'll change your direction. You can find joy out of a rainy day. You can find hope out of a hopeless situation. You can find God in the midst of the mess that you're struggling with in your life. Somebody here today knows that the reason you can't get to where God would have you to be is because God ain't going to bless you when you're trying to bless yourself. God can't elevate you when you won't give him the joy, the praise, the peace, what he's already done. So this is what I want to give you this week. Everybody pull out your phone. Everybody pull out your phone. Here's where I want to leave you this week. Keep that going. Keep that going. Number one, identify things in your life that you are trying to get the glory from. So where, where in your life are you trying to get the glory? What, what situation are you trying to get the glory out of? instead of giving God the, the glory for. That's your prayer this whole week. This whole week, look at your life and say, maybe I can't have peace at the job because I'm trying to celebrate myself at the job. I can't have peace in my relationship with my husband and my wife because I'm trying to say, we are because I'm great. Look at your own life and see how you're trying to snatch the glory from God and give it to yourself. But this whole month, we've been looking at this dude by the name of Abraham and a lot of times we never read the end of the story. We never read what happened to this guy. Did God keep his word? Did God keep his promise? Because God told Abraham, y'all remember God told Abraham, I'm going to let you live a long life. You're going to be satisfied and you're going to go to sleep being happy with life. A lot of times what we don't know is Sarah died around 145 years old. Abraham got married again had almost six or seven more children. Look at y'all. I didn't know that was in the Bible. And he ended up dying at 175 years old. And the Bible says about him that Abraham lived 175 years and he died at a ripe old age. Look at this. Here's the key. Having lived a long and satisfying life, he breathed his last breath and joined his ancestors in death. You know what that tells me? It just simply tells me that God will keep his word. God will keep his word. The question is not if God will keep his word. The question is on you and I. Will we stay with him? Will we stick with God? Through the rainy days, the sunny days. Through the good days, the bad days. Are you willing to let God lead you? Are you willing?